This is the new TC Pride Podcast, Episode 52, on location coverage of the Gender Real Transgender Film Series at Augsburg College. TC Pride Podcast, we are on location at Augsburg College for the Transgender Film Series event. And uh, I'm here with one of our attendees tonight. Um, can you tell me what's your name and where you're from, please? Allie Tripp, and I'm from Richfield, Minnesota. And can you tell me about uh, maybe one of the films tonight that was especially moving to you, or maybe some of the moments of some of the films that stuck out? Well, the Korean movie about the adoptee who went back after the age of 50 and, and uh, lived a life that was very successful as a transgender woman was really inspiring. And I really loved the artistic nature of all the shorts. Um, seeing a wide variety from somebody using a doll to personify their story to somebody using intermixed cartoons with um, selfies of themselves as they told a story about their transgender experience was really helpful in um, seeing a lot of different perspectives. And it was an artistic way to journey through um, a lot of short stories. And why do you think it's important to have events like this and increase visibility and, and awareness in the community? Well, the more people communicate about things and talk openly about their ideas, the more people understand each other. And that's really important. I think it helps the whole society be stronger when everybody understands each other or communicates better with each other. Well, thanks so much for your time, Nigel. There's it. Thank you. I'm Zachary Mallory. I'm originally from Kansas City, but moved up to Minneapolis back in December. So tell me about some of the films tonight. Was there anything that kind of stuck out to you, maybe some moments that were more powerful, um, some of the films that impacted you in any certain way? I feel like all the films are actually very inclusive, and I feel like it's something that definitely needs to be shown in the community a little more wider. Um, I feel like we had like a good, um, diverse crowd tonight, and I feel like if more people um, like seen these films and understood the meaning behind them, I think it would actually create the community content that we need to see, especially with everything that's going on right now. Um, we need more diversity. We need more... Um, just kind of commentary, you know, like, and even holding like these discussions, like asking questions after watching the films, that's something that we can do as a community, as a whole, to kind of come together and make sure everybody has a voice. I'm Sue, and I'm here from Minneapolis. Likewise, James is my name. And so can you tell me just kind of what you thought of, of some of the films tonight? Um, I love the first one. I thought uh, about the dating one. I think it's, um, besides being really well done and just very lighthearted, it also really did a good job of conveying the confusion, uh, you know, about who you are, you know, and how do you relate and what does that mean about who you are? And I, I really appreciated that. Um, I like the last one as too, as well, just as, um, uh, you know, the, the concept of completing the circle and, and kind of going back. Um, I think, you know, with our daughter, uh, that's, you know, looking at her roots as, you know, I think been part of the kind of the adventure. Well, the last mo the last movie was rather sobering looking at the uh, op opposition that the uh, returning woman faced and um uh, my my heart goes out to, to to people in that in that situation just trying to be who they are well, and i think that that uh, uh had we stayed in missouri when our daughter came out i think she would have faced a lot of the same kinds of obstacles so Kind of grateful that we moved to Minneapolis before she did. So you said you don't live too far away. You're kind of from the community here. Why, why do you think it's so important to have events like this um, within the community? Uh, well, I, th I think w just awareness. We came with a couple of friends of ours the first time, uh, you know, the first film series. And um, they really had no idea just kind of what the concerns were. And, you know, even the simple things like pronouns or the importance of pronouns. Um, and so I think that there's a lot of sympathy in this area, but not a lot of understanding. And so... This kind of thing really helps. It all starts with understanding. Thank you very much for uh, coming out tonight and um, have a great night. All right. Thank you. TC Pride Podcast. We're on location at Augsburg College for the Transgender Film Series event. And I'm here with the executive director of the organization holding the event tonight. I'm here with Joe Ippolito from Gender Real. And first of all, congratulations. Uh, I understand this is your five year anniversary. Um, well, actually, here in the Twin Cities, yes. Yeah. So, though Gender Real has been around going on seven years because we started two years prior to this in Philadelphia. So tell me briefly about the films uh, that were screened tonight and, and why they're selected. You said you were going for kind of more of a lighthearted feel tonight. Yes. I mean, the last two uh, events, two nights uh, events prior to tonight were more serious and a little bit heavier. So tonight I wanted to make 
kind of the final event be a little bit more lighthearted and fun? Um, so gender reel was started to increase visibility of uh, gender nonconforming and um, trans and queer film artists. Um, how different would you say the world is now in terms of visibility and accessibility compared to when you started five years ago? Um, well, when I started the film festival uh, initially back in 2011, um, it was definitely um, far less of this visibility across the board, I think. Um, in particular, the festival was started in response to the lack of transgender uh, visibility of films at LGB f film festivals. So uh, I've definitely seen an improvement in that uh, more more transgender and gender nonconforming programming at more mainstream LGBT film festivals. And of course, there's a, a fair amount of trans film festivals that have started around the country as well, more specifically um, uh, focusing on the trans part of the LGBT community. Um, as far as overall visibility in our culture, I definitely would say that there's been, in, even in the past five years, a, a major change. Uh, I think uh, there's much more visibility now than there had been in the past. Uh, sadly enough, though, with our current administration here in this country, we've seen a kind of uh, a reversal of some things in terms of like the bathroom bill and things like that, that uh, have lead some of us to have growing concerns. But at this point, I think there's definitely more overall visibility. So you are getting a lot of support, a lot of awareness around the festival and uh, around your organization. But just for people that maybe aren't aren't familiar uh, with with the background and the history of the organization, um, I guess I, I direct them to the website because the story is there about kind of how how it started. But uh, can you maybe give people a, a brief sort of history of how the organization came into being? Yes, um, when we started in two thousand and eleven, again it was in response to the lack of transgender visibility at more mainstream LGBT film festivals, and in fact, it started in Philadelphia. In 2010 is when we initially started meeting uh, as organizers. Uh, it was my brainchild, if you will, but uh, also the brainchild of a friend of mine who is no longer involved and wasn't involved after the first year just because she actually moved out of the country. Um, but it was really to kind of challenge this issue of visibility. And in fact, uh, at first it was like, okay, if you're not going to increase visibility of trans programming at such and such film festival, then we're going to do our own. And in fact, it was uh, due to a film festival in Philadelphia that was not showing hardly any trans films. Uh, since then, again, there's been a real change and the festival itself has evolved in various ways, becoming a multi-city film festival in that we show uh, films around the country in different cities at various different times. However, the film festival here in the Twin Cities is now our primary film festival because this is, of course, where I reside. We also have, though, festivals in other cities um, around the country uh, in the fall. So one of the ways that people can support uh, Gender Real is by becoming a festival affiliate. Um, tell me about some of your affiliates and, and how important they are to the work that you do. Well, we've, we've had all kinds of affiliates. Uh, a lot of them are people at you know, like the uh, the Global Action Project in New York City, and we showed one of their films tonight. Uh, or, you know, just kind of coordinating festival uh, work with organizations like Pride, um, just kind of collect connecting with other um, organizations and groups here and around the country that are interested in supporting this work. And, um, you know, I really think that anyone can become an affiliate if you're um, wanting to support the visibility of trans people. So it's been five years, but it kind of sounds like you're just getting started. Um, tell me about Gender Real Productions and some of the plans you have for that part of the organization. Well, I have been kind of trying to figure out where to go with things uh, because it's really, at this point, has been largely just myself. And that's because, you know, I do this really just very part time in that I also work a regular full time job. And so, um, you know, I'm trying to figure out now what sh in which direction to head. I did apply recently to a for a grant here locally, that if I do get the grant will be uh, help me to expand on some things, including in improving the website, and possibly doing some uh, archival options on the website of films that we've shown in the past so people can continue to see them. Uh, that would be really great. As far as our own gender real productions go, we did produce 
one film in 2014, Growing Old Gracefully, but we haven't really thought about any future films, though my hope is to, as we go forward, possibly be a, an organization that can offer a grant to filmmakers to make films, um, at least one a year, even if it's a short. That's one of my personal goals and has been for some time now. You did mention grants, and I've actually been out talking to a lot of artists uh, throughout the course of doing the podcast recently. And something that they also need to be concerned about is is the potential reduction in funding through organizations like the National Endowment for the Arts. Yes, I, I actually, when I noticed or heard about you know that change and the funds being removed from uh, supporting the National Endowment of the Arts from the federal government, it did raise major concern for me. Um, I've actually spoken to uh, organizations here in the in the uh, Minnesota area about that, n- kind of indirectly, uh, groups that do fund like the um, uh, Metropolitan Regional Arts Council and other groups. And they kind of assured me that their grants are set in place and will be available despite the national issues going on with supporting uh, arts, um, ma- mainly because uh, we pay here in the state of Minnesota, for example, the taxpayers, we, we, they allocate a certain amount of money towards the arts, which I think is a great thing and needs to continue. Um, but as far as uh, things on a national level, I think there is a growing concern uh, as this new administration has kind of really changed things. But there is hope that in three years that will change again and we'll be able to get back to you know, supporting the arts, because that's so important. It's so important part of our culture, even if you, you know, in the films that I showed today, I mean, these are films, but there's so much that you can do with a film in terms of educating and showing diversity in terms of people's experiences. And so they're just so very important. So what are some other ways people can support Gender Real during during the festivals and, and throughout the year? Well, my biggest hope is that people just come out and enjoy the films and participate in, in really seeing what's out there and, and uh, you know, being able to participate in that. Um, the festivals here, you know, it ebbs and it flows. I'd like to have a larger turnout uh, of people. Not that it's been necessarily bad. It's just not as much as you would think. I think films are unusual, too. It's not a party. It's not a dance club. It's a film. So you come and you watch and, you know, there's a post discussion. But I think if people come out when they get out, they usually always enjoy them. So that would be one way. And then, of course, submitting work. Uh, If you're a local filmmaker and you want to submit some of your work, that would be great. And of course, we always could use financial support. Um, And people, we are a nonprofit. So if you do support us, you do can use that as a tax write off. So those kinds of things and just supporting trans artists across the board, um, both locally and nationally is just so important. And so where can people go to find out uh, how they can contribute financially or maybe submit work, like you said? Um, Well, currently we have a call out right now for our fall festivals, and that is ends current uh, through June 15th. So people can submit to Gender Girl right now for our upcoming festivals this October. Uh, But in general, I think um, our website, you know, you can go there and find out ways in which to submit work and also uh, ways in which you can support us financially if you're interested in doing that. Uh, It's www.genderrealfest.com and it's gender r-e-e-l fest.com well joe thanks so much for your time tonight good luck with everything you're doing thank you so much the tc pride podcast has been a production of pod letter media and twin cities pride subscribe now on itunes or google play and submit your first pride story at myfirstpride.org